Well, she's a best-selling author of The Soul Searcher's Handbook, creator of Wabi Sabi magazine, columnist, speaker and spiritual activist. Please welcome to the cafe and the Harvey Normal Lounge, Emma Milden, also known as a spiritual personal assistant. Yes. Emma, welcome. Hi, guys. Now, I have to mention, before we get any further, Emma yes. and I went to Bali last year. Emma is responsible for this tattoo I have on my arm oh, right wow. here. Emma, c c she coerced me into going and getting it on the, at the spur of the moment. And it was the best <laughs> thing I've ever done. Thank you so much, Emma. What a yeah. trip, man. Yeah. <laughs> happens when you go on holiday with a hippie. Right. Well, no, this is good. So I want to learn more about, you know, exactly what you do. Um, what is a spiritual personal assistant? Yep. So I basically crowned myself the spiritual PA because I didn't consider myself a boss of anything. I felt like I was of service. And in a sense, I felt like I was reporting in for duty, helping people get their spiritual life and general conscious crap in order I guess. Mm. <laughs> so how long have you been interested like where did it actually come from? So I've always been um, a little bit alternative but it really started when I was a teenager. I did my classic Kiwi OE, went traveling um, and really started to explore. So I went to Peru and um, you know Ireland and um, studied the Celtics and the Caribbean, I started to get really curious and I think when you've got a backpack and on your back and that liberating freedom to really explore the world, you can end up in some weird and wonderful places. And what is it you write about? Yeah, so good question. So about lifestyle. Right. So if you take away the woo, the spirituality, or the wellness or the consciousness or the mindfulness and all those buzzwords, I just write about how to live well and give you tools to live your best self. Mm. So minus all that stigma, it's just stuff to help get you through your day. Because some people listen and they, they almost switch off, don't they? Because they go, oh, total hippie. Just, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's a lot of woo woo. But you've written this book, which is a soul searcher's handbook, uh, which is a modern girls and guy, yes. guy's guide to the okay, new age world. Well, you sort of cover off everything, don't you? And give us a taste of what, what it's all about with no, no nonsense. Yeah. That's exactly. So at the time that I was traveling and exploring everything, I was picking up books that were really bossy and telling me how, what I should believe in and how I should behave. As a millennial, I hated that. Um, so writing a book that was minus the rules, that kind of gave you a menu that you could explore and take what you like and ditch the rest, just seemed right and it's proving to resonate with lots of people. Well, yeah. No it hasn't, it's a massive bestseller but it was a hard road to get there. You were initially rejected by a few publishers weren't you? I was you? rejected a lot. How and many times? 300 times. Wow. And I think people don't talk about that enough but it's such a powerful part of achieving something when you really really commit to it. So little girl from New Zealand, um, I think I remember hitting rock bottom getting you know, rejected from like Hokitika Unicorn Press or something like that, <laughs> being, you know, on my knees about it and um, ended up getting picked up by Simon Trista in New York. So, and now you've got, I mean, you've got, you're a big deal in the States. I, yeah, it still blows my mind because I am the girl next door. Mm. So, yeah. But that's testament, I guess, to what you're writing about, isn't it? You know, believing in yourself and having a good well being. Exactly. So you don't give up. You don't why, give up. Why yeah. do you think they didn't take you initially? Why was, why the rejection? Well, I guess I'm a down-to-earth Kiwi girl with the world at my feet and not a lot to offer, and I was a gamble, really. Um, I felt called to do this. I felt like there wasn't a book out there that was an encyclopedia of how to live well without all the bossy BS, um, mm. for better use of a word. And, yeah, I think someone just saw something in me that gave me a chance. Well, see, I find that really interesting that they say that you're not, you know, you're a no-one because you are such an incredible person to be around. Sassy is too. Yeah. She, you know, likes the crystals and everything, but totally sassy. I've heard some great stories, which I can't share on air. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, well, I've just been three minutes with you and I'm very fascinated if I could have that sort of, you know, effervescent personality that you have. But you talk about crystals as well, do yeah, you? Yeah, why, why are they important in this? I love crystals because they're almost just like a physical... Um, holistic stress ball, for better use of a Okay, yeah, nice. And, you know, lots of people tell me, prove it, how do they work, do they work, are they a placebo? Who cares? If it makes someone feel better, if it gets you through your day, if it transform a good day to a great day, then crystal away. <laughs> so what's a good crystal? Let's see, what, what stress? What's a good crystal for stress? Because I think a lot of people have stress in their lives. Yep, stress, anxiety, um, nervous tension, um, depression. There's crystals, um, rose quartz is great, it supports the heart, helps with anxiety, overthinking, self-doubt. It's the ultimate self-love crystal. So if you're giving yourself negative self-talk, if you're having a hard time in your relationships, if you're having body image issues, rose quartz. We just fill our pockets with it. 
for your pockets, you can wear them in, as jewellery, you can pop them down your bra, whatever vibes. <laughs> you can put them down your bra, mate. Oh, okay, I, wow, I just about need one the way I'm going. Oh. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> See, <what>? self-love. <laughs> <laughs> I need that book. Okay, well, let's talk about your spirit animal then. I'm fascinated. What is a spirit animal? Yeah, so spirit animals or familiars yeah. um, come in the form of pets. They might be animals that you've always resonated with or always been curious about. Um, in ancient American tradition, animal medicine is very important and what the animal um, does in terms of its natural behaviour can have um, tools and, and lessons to help you in your daily life. Mm. You like to keep it real don't you? I mean you're, you're no nonsense like what are your affirmations? People are dicks Love them oh, anyway, yeah, I love that. which we can all relate to, yes, right? And yes. I think that's a point. It's and that's why I put a woo-woo scale in the book. Is that it's not meant to be fluffy or nonsense. It's meant to be practical, logical spirituality, which haven't really been a, a combination. Mm. Um, you know, real stuff for real people that just want to live well without the crap. Okay, well, can you answer this then? What about you know talking to the spirit world? Yeah. Do you do a bit of that? Yeah, I think everyone does. I think everyone is more intu intuitive than they give themselves credit for. Right. So I quite often get little messages, little clues, little spiritual breadcrumbs. It might be repeating numbers on a clock, it might be hearing a song, it might be seeing a feather, um, thinking about someone and then bumping into them or getting a call. Um, we all have that superpower. Mm. So yes, I do, and I'm sure you guys do too. It's just about reading into it what you will, isn't mm -hmm. it? Um, so what are you working on now? So I'm currently chipping away at my next book, which is Evolution of Goddess, um, which is a bit of a next ironic evolution of Soul Searcher's Handbook. It's about spiritual activism. So cool, you've been mindful, that's great, now what? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I've got really nervous sitting here thinking, I wonder what's running through her head as she looks at me. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you later. Anyway. <laughs> Hey, Emma, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in. Thank you um, so much. Great book as well. It's good to dip into and have a little bit of a read. And if you would like to find out more, you can head along to Emma's website, emmamilburn.com.